Okay, folks, let's just sit back and enjoy. The history of the hockey helmet begins in 1927 with Queen's University goaltender Elizabeth Graham becoming the first recorded goalie to ever wear a mask. In 1928, George Owens becomes the first NHL player to ever wear a helmet. In 1930, Clint Benedict is the first goalie to wear a mask in the NHL. Made of leather, it protects only the forehead, nose, and mouth. At the 1936 Winter Olympic Games in Germany, a Japanese goaltender wears a leather mask with the first wire cage to protect his glasses. In 1959, the infamous Jacques Plante wears a fiberglass full-face mask to protect his face after receiving a cut, revolutionizing masks forever. In 1968, Minnesota North Stars center Bill Masterson dies as a result of head trauma. Bill was not wearing a helmet. This was a turning point for making helmets mandatory equipment. In 1975, Greg Nailed creates the first helmet visor, nicknamed the Fishbowl. In 1979, 11 years after Bill Masterson's death, the NHL finally implements a rule enforcing incoming NHL players to wear a helmet. Diehard veteran hockey players were allowed to continue on playing without a helmet. This rule was titled the Grandfather Rule. In 1996, Craig McTavish is the last NHL player to ever go helmetless. In 2012, Virginia Tech develops a star rating system for sports helmets, analyzing 120 impacts to determine the possible number of concussions an athlete wearing this helmet may experience. And the latest in helmet development is, in 2013, clear half visors became mandatory for all NHL players. A grandfather clause is a provision where an old rule continues to apply to some individuals while it changes for others. Those exempt from the new rule are said to have been grandfathered in. The NHL's grandfather rule first came into play June 1, 1979. Any player who had signed a contract and waiver prior to the rule were allowed to continue to play without a helmet. The last player to play without a helmet was Craig McTavish in 1996. Recently, the NHL has added another grandfather clause where all new players are required to wear a visor. Those in the league before the rules implementation were allowed to continue on visorless. Boston's Eddie Shore became the first high-profile National Hockey League star to wear a helmet. In December 1933, Shore, a defender for the Bruins, hit Toronto's ace Bailey. Bailey's unprotected head hit the ice, resulting in a fractured skull and he nearly died. He recovered, but Bailey never played hockey again. Shaken by the incident, Shore wore a helmet for the remainder of his career. However, in those days, helmets consisted of little more than strips of leather stitched together in a crude skull cap and chin strap. Jova helmets first appeared in Europe in 1926, where the company produced leather and plastic helmets for European League players. Jova helmets were the first to feature an attached face mask and visor, and the adjustable sizing option. Athletes like Wayne Gretzky, Jeremy Jaeger, and Timo Solani helped get the Jova the professional advertising it needed and built the brand up. Jova eventually turned into Reebok and CCM in the early 2000s. Jofa helmets were the building block for the hockey helmet world and led to the creation of the most state-of-the-art helmets that we see today. Boasting the latest in innovative protection technology, the Cooper brand helmets found popularity in the mid-1980s. Besides the advertised improvement in ventilation system and protective qualities, marketers targeted the aspects of comfort by highlighting the all-new moldable feature of the helmet. By detaching the Cooper locks on the side of the helmet, the front and back pieces of the helmet could adjust to your proper head size. This process rivaled other models that required tools to take apart the clips and adjust the helmet, and inspired many of today's helmet designs as well. With concussions becoming an epidemic in the last decade, helmet manufacturers had one thought in mind, safety. CCM's new multi-density VN foam liner tech is a hard-shelled helmet designed to maintain shape by flexing key areas to transfer forces. That includes the use of an inner shock-absorbing gel pads to reduce linear rotational forces and is 25% thicker than most other helmets on the market to reduce direct impact forces. CCM's newest FL500 is the only helmet to hold the rating of 5 stars on the Virginia Tech Star Rating Scale. 